After being selected in the first round of the 1984 NBA Draft, Kevin Willis played 21 seasons in the NBA and standing at 7 feet tall, 245 pounds, he was an enforcer, an instigator, and sometimes an outright bully every year that he played. We just had Sally and Willis bang one another. Now, also, Willis popped Sally right in the face. And in Game 7 of the 1988 Eastern Conference Semifinals, while playing for the Atlanta Hawks, he tried to bully his way through Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics. It was. A lot of banging. It was two referees at the time, so you could just go in and bang. They can't catch everything. You get busted in the mouth. You get elbowed in the chin, whatever it was. And sometimes you get caught, sometimes you don't. There is blood on the right side of Dennis Johnson's face. He is cut at the right eye as he comes out defensively. But that's how, the, that's how we played. That was the Eastern Conference, and I loved it. I welcomed it, and I, they taught me a lot. And so I knew what referee you can get away with stuff and what referees you can't do anything with. Tommy, no love loss between Willis and McHale in this series. It's been going on the whole series. A little contact here and there. You watch him right now. And here's some serious stuff going on as McHale held him. And then Willis just smacked him in the nose. And then back comes McHale and they call the second one. You didn't see the first one. All you did was see the second one. If you want to make a footprint in this game, you want to make a name for yourself. The physical part, that was great. Do it when you need it. But it's all mental. It, it was mental. Unfortunately, Kevin Willis picked the wrong one to play mind games with because at the end of the third quarter, with Larry Bird having a relatively quiet game up until that point, Kevin Willis did something to set Larry Bird off and the ultimate instigator accidentally ignited one of the greatest fourth quarter performances of all time. That fourth quarter, maybe the best fourth quarter as far as uh, mono mono of all time. In that series, Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics were facing the greatest Atlanta Hawks team in franchise history, led by the human highlight film Dominique Wilkins. 15 seconds. Here's Eddie Johnson. And what a spectacular dunk. He was spectacular. I mean, just spectacular. Uh, the dunks. The explosions to the basket. So we're playing, it's, it's Neek's, a, Neek's a rookie, he's coming in, the ball goes up. You know, you know I push C-Web, you know how you, you, you clear space, you right. get that rebound every day, you're not even worried about it, because I push it and I, I go up to get it, and all of a sudden, man, there's just a force all over my shoulder. <laughs> he grabs it, he dunks it, you know those short shorts? <laughs> they were right here. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you right now. I, I mean, he threw that thing down, and I was like, oh my, and Larry has the classic line, Larry goes, you know, Larry's pretty, Larry, Larry never got too excited. He goes, shoot, I better, better box that guy out, huh, Kev? I said, yeah, I suggest, I suggest you put a body on him. That was one of the craziest things ever. I'd never seen a guy that high in my life. Oh, he just threw God. it down. Short shorts right here, huh, Kev? Right sure. here, baby. That was not, I still have nightmares about that, Smitty. <laughs> Obviously. When I was young in basketball camps, kids would always ask me, have you ever been dumped on? And I said, every day, by my, by my teammate, you know? <laughs> I don't know how many times I thought I was getting an offensive rebound, and, and then all of a sudden this guy is jumping over me. You know, he had this saying, a lot of people can go to the top floor, but very few people can go to the penthouse. Yeah. <laughs> but when the series began, Larry Bird set the tone in game one by dropping 24 points in the first quarter. Back to Larry, looking for three. He got it. Inside Larry, pushed by Wilkins, fall away, Bird. Yeah! What did I say at the top? Bird will be ready. 24 in the first quarter, a new Garden record, the most points ever scored before in one quarter in a Boston Garden game. Well, the whole series was crazy. Uh, game one and two, the Celtics won by like a combined 80 points. Like they blew us out. I remember coming back for game three to Atlanta and the big article. Uh, in Atlanta uh, Journal was put a fork in him, we're done, you know? And then we win game three and then win game four, go into Boston and win game five. We won game five in Boston. We was not supposed to win that game, you know, the critics say. So we knew going to game six, I said, man, we could, we could advance and we can beat these guys. And then the last play in game six, I inbound the ball to Cliff Livingston, and he was supposed to dribble handoff to either me 
or Dominique. Uh, Cliff looked at Dominique, and then Cliff went on his own and shot a close right-handed. He shot a left-handed hook shot uh, to end that game. With Chuck, look for Dominique Wilkins to begin with. Here we go. Livingston, no. Boston has won the game. We blew our opportunity, and at the end of the game, we drew up a play, and it was it turned into a broken play, and Cliff Livingston went to back with left hand uh, running hook. I was mad because the play was supposed to come to me, and I'm like, Woody, don't break the play, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and so we ended up losing that game. And We had won, and we was waiting to play the winner of Atlanta-Boston. Mm -hmm. yeah, they yeah. beat y'all game six in Atlanta. At the, at the, yeah. Dumars and I are on the phone because we watching the game, and we taking notes. After y'all lost game six, Joe and I hung up. We said, all right, we playing Boston because they ain't going to win in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> and so I remember landing in Boston, and I remember this old lady at the airport. And I'm not exaggerating. She may have been 80. And she walked up to me. Hey, Rivers, you thought you wasn't coming back, didn't you? I, I, I will <laughs> never forget that. I wish I knew who that lady was. After the game, six, uh, Barrett made a prediction. He said, Atlanta blew their opportunity. I'm guaranteeing a win in Boston. Well, they had their chance. You know, they had a big chance uh, to beat us. I think now that we're going to come out and, and play like we did tonight, but we're going to be at home. And um, our shots are going to be dropping a little bit better, and we're going to be running a little bit faster. So I'd say Sunday's going to be a big win for the Celtics. And we had to look at that, right? Big headlines. So I remember we get to Boston, and we walk out of the locker room, and I stop. I said, we're going to win this bleep bleep game. I said, if you ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war, don't come out here. I said, whoever guarded me tonight going to have a long night. He is off quickly here with six points. I mean, every time I got to lane, there was Paris, there was Dennis in the lane, there was Kevin McHale. So I had to get creative. But I felt like in that game, no matter what they threw at me, it didn't matter. From the offense for the Hawks. Wilkins from the perimeter. That's one in the offense. 20 points for Dominique. And during the first three quarters, everyone could see that Larry Bird didn't look like his normal dominating self. So Bird has not taken charge. And perhaps age and father time starting to tell. Bird cuts free. Rims out. Move in tightly on Johnson after he picks up his dribble. Against the double team, Bird is short again. Bird on the pull-up. Doesn't get the roll. So the superstar who put the pressure squarely on his shoulders by guaranteeing a victory here for Boston in number seven, struggling in the opening period. And when Kevin Willis saw a glimpse of weakness, he got way too cocky and decided that this was his chance to break Larry Bird's spirit. But instead of breaking Larry's spirit, all he did was wake up a sleeping giant. You know, Bill, I was that guy who wanted to be physical, the enforcer on the team and all that. And I had to sort of try to protect Dominique. And so when Willis Three became assistant coach, he got in my ear. Willis Three said, man, listen, the physicality is great, but it's the mental side of the game I want you to start focusing on. <laughs> Never forget this. Kevin Willis, we would come down the court in the third quarter, and he reached over and burst chest. So it was Kevin Willis, it was me and Larry. We run down the court, and Kevin reached across me and put his hands, and Burr's chest reaches across me and puts his finger, and Larry Burr's chest said, don't let this so-and-so score any more tonight. He said, don't let this so-and-so score more, no more tonight. He said, don't let this so-and-so score any more tonight. I'm like, don't let this son of a gun score anymore. Burr's eyes got this big. <laughs> I look at Kevin, what are you doing? And I looked at Kevin, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You don't want to wake a sleeping giant. He got 12 points. Like, don't, don't wake him up. And I looked at Kevin, uh, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> Leave him sleep. Hey, hey, Let him stay asleep. Sleep, yes. And he got hot. And the coach said, Nick, go out there, stop him. I'm like, stop him? He hot now. He forget that. <laughs> yeah. That's the only thing I can do is try to match him bucket for bucket. Bucket, bucket. And it was a shootout in the fourth quarter. It came down to the last shot. Not so good at it. Bird gets it in low on the turnaround against Wilkins. Bird now cuts free. So they 
displayed in the early moments. Bird is up with the shot. Mike Fratello might need an early timeout. Bird started out two of seven. He has hit his last three. Larry Bird that night was, listen, uh, it, it was unbelievable. And he was so clutch. Mm -hmm. Meek was just as clutch that night. It's just that Larry in the fourth quarter was unstoppable. Said Bird had 20 of his 34 in the fourth quarter. Dominique had <laughs> Dominique had 17 of his 47 in the fourth quarter, and they were going, they bucket, was going bucket down the street. Oh, they was going at it. Larry was torturing him. Dominique was torturing me on uh, when he had the ball. This is a type of game of who's going to blink first. Wilkins responds. What a game! That fourth quarter, maybe the best fourth quarter as far as uh, mano mano of all time. Between the two of them. It's Bird's turn. And the have the lead. Oh, man. You know, it was crazy, too, because it's rare in a game. You feel it. Right. That was one of the few games I was you in. Knew it. This, this was, was a hell of a game right it. now. <laughs> it was a hell of a game. And what's even more impressive is that in those 1988 playoffs, Larry Bird had painful bone spurs in both feet. They were so bad that he didn't even play the following season because he had to get surgery on both feet. And though Larry Bird played a few more seasons, this injury essentially ended Larry Bird's dominant career as we knew it because he was never the same again. However, on this night with two bad feet, Larry Bird disregarded the pain and went shot for shot with one of the greatest scorers of all time. And once again proved why he's the toughest player in NBA history. In 88, we were banged up a little bit. Matter of fact, the great story about this series is I remember before this big game against Dominique that Larry was out shooting. And I was out shooting early at one end of the court. Larry was down at the other end. And I noticed that Larry was down there like shooting left-handed jump hooks from like 12, 15 feet. Now, he made left-handed shots, but... I saw him shooting right-handed jump hooks from 12 or 15 feet. And I went down there and go like, what are you doing? He goes, my Achilles tendons are killing me. My step back isn't, it won't work tonight. I need that jump hook. And he made something in that game. I mean, it's just unbelievable. That just tells you his confidence and tells you like what kind of a player he was just to have a game plan of what shots he was going to make that night. Bird attempting to break free. Stays with it and the foul is called. Just like he rehearsed it. <laughs> to watch him just gut it out and just to will his body to even finish that game, let alone score 20 in the fourth quarter of a game seven is, is mind-boggling to me. Man, he was doing a little bit of everything. I don't know really what he was doing in that fourth quarter, but the stuff that he was doing, it was unbelievable, man. I mean, he was throwing left-hand shots, running books. Uh, his game was at another level. We was trying to match each other's will. And so it was just a game who was going to hit first. And it's Bird. And the duel continues. 42 for Wilkins, 30 for Bird. It's 112-107 Boston. It was probably like 30, 40 seconds to go in the game. But I remember he said, you know, we both deserve to win, but somebody got to go home. 112, 109, 47 seconds. Another defensive stop. A must here for the Hawks. They knew who was going to get the ball. It's like Robert Parrish always said, 40,000 eyes on Larry Bird because they knew he was going to get the ball. And uh, we knew it, our opponents knew it. Now it's just up to them to stop it. Johnson gets it into Bird, and Wilkins is there. Bird comes free. what greatness is all about. We began the broadcast by telling you about Larry Bird, who following the Game 6 victory by the Celtics in Atlanta, 
guaranteed a win in number seven, saying the Hawks blew their chance by losing number six. Larry Bird started the game slowly, but here in the fourth period, he has shown you why he's a future Hall of Famer. 20 points this quarter. He is 9 of 10 in this period. He has hit his last six field goals, and as far as Larry Bird is concerned, it's Detroit. Here we come. Oh, the miss, and that's it. Boston 118, Atlanta 116. I mean, that was one of the greatest performances I've seen from a guy in those circumstances. Because you're talking about seventh game in the playoffs. To carry his team the way he did in that fourth quarter, man, to his credit, man, he took the Celtics and put them on his back. And pretty much that was it.